original Egyptian pyramid. It's been uh, built in the first century BC, but it's made by the ancient Romans, so it's just inspired by the Egyptian pyramids. But the obelisks you see in the major squares of Rome, those are actually Egyptians. Uh, and as you can imagine, they have not been uh, willingly donated. They have been stolen, all of them. Between the 1st century BC and the 4th century AD, by the ancient Roman emperors. Uh, of course, as soon as uh, this territory, the Egyptian uh, um, kingdom, let's say, was uh, conquered by the ancient Romans, so it was such a great achievement for them, but they wanted to show off. So they needed some trophies to bring, bring back to Rome. And, you know, what can you do with a little tiny souvenir? No, you want something messy, massive. And so they brought all of those obelisks, they broke them to pieces to easily ship them through the Mediterranean, and then they put them back together in Rome. And the first one to actually reach Rome was the the one that we saw in the middle of uh, Piazza del Popolo this morning. That's one of the first to arrive in Rome, brought by Augustus, uh, the first uh, emperor of Rome in the first century AD. Can you imagine soon after Egypt had been conquered, uh, there was Egypt mania going on all around Rome. Uh, even the ladies, you know, were adopting that very elaborate makeup, uh, like the Egyptian ladies. Uh, so the, the obelisks you can see in Rome are just part of that culture that uh, Let's say mixed up with the ancient Roman one after the first century BC. And of course, you saw a lot of ancient Roman art as well. You saw the classic uh, um, Hellenistic style statues in the Farnese collection that have been excavated in the Caracalla Baths, mainly in Rome by the Farnese family. And top floor, but also mezzanine floor, some of you stopped me on the halls asking where the secret cabinet was. Uh, it was a little hard to find, uh, I can I give you that. Uh, of course, uh, if you think that it, originally it was supposed to be the private secret cabinet of the king, nobody else was allowed, so that's why it's a little you know, hidden in the mezzanine, uh, just around the corner, you have to go through a couple more rooms, uh, but eventually it's something uh, peculiar. And uh, even though we are risking to transform this into an erotic tour, there will be something like that this afternoon as well, probably. Yippee! <laughs> All right, as we make our way um, outside of uh, Naples, I would like to tell you something more about this area. As we were saying before, we saw some of the things that actually made uh, everyday life for the ancient Romans back in the times uh, when uh, Pompeii and all those other cities that were affected by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius were buried under all that volcanic material. And I also talked to some of you inside the museum uh, that you liked the uh, Egyptian uh, section also. All right, so that's actually stunning, I think. I know these mummies. Uh, I've been to the British Museum as well, and they have a fantastic Egyptian section. Uh, but um, it's stunning uh, to see all the, the hair. It can be creepy in a way, but well. <laughs> this is the second uh, largest Egyptian collection in Italy after the one in Turin. So if you're thinking, OK, what's the connection between Egyptian art and Egyptian culture in general and what we came to see here, ancient Roman culture in Pompeii. Well, if you think about it, we have a lot of, it, of Egypt in Rome as well. You probably saw all of those uh, ancient Egyptian obelisks uh, in all the major squares in front of or next to the major basilicas of Rome. We also have an Egyptian pyramid in Rome. Has somebody seen it? Yes? Yeah?
Pedro, creo que ya.